Hello, it's Sarah and Kiwi. And I just wanted to come on and talk about birds as a pet. Now, Kiwi is, come here, baby. She is, no, no, she wants to get back to my shoulder. Um, she's a green cheek conure. Come here, come here. Don't be afraid of the camera. <laughs> she is. All right, don't be afraid. Don't be, yeah, see that tail wag? That means she's okay. She's happy. It's okay. Um, she's a green cheek conure, and if you look at her, her little cheeks are green. Um, she's about, I want to say, 10 or 11 years old. And I got her from a breeder in a town nearby. Um, I had two other birds at the time. So that she made three, and I think birds can become like a tattoo. You just keep getting them. So here's the thing I wanted to first say is I felt, okay, I'm going to show you pictures of my other birds in a minute because I don't have them anymore. And the thing is, these birds are never going to be in the wild. They are raised in captivity, you know. They're raised from eggs. They are, a lot of times, they're syringe fed, so they're never fed by their mommies, and they're meant to be pets. So they're hand fed so that they're not nervous of people. That, that made me realize that, you know, them not flying, because, here, I'm gonna show you a picture of Maxie. This is Max. He is my, he was my blue and gold, um, blue and gold macaw. This is Pepper. He's an eclectus, uh, a male eclectus parrot. And that's Kiwi. But the thing is, they're never going to be out in the wild. So you have, to, it's like, you know, so then you just figure you give them the best home that they could have. Now, Peggy Camilla had um, posted a, a, a message to me about my birdie, well, other things too. Hi, Peggy. Um, but I clip Kiwi. She, she is clipped. Her wings are clipped. Come here, baby girl. Come here. I'm going to try and hold her and show you. So here's her wing. And those feathers on the end, these feathers here, are called her flight feathers. And those are the ones that give them lift. So she can flutter. She can flutter down. Like if she falls off her cage or something. Sorry, I had a hairband on yesterday and my hair's off. She can flutter down so she won't just fall like a rock if she falls down. But she can't get flight. Like she's not going to be able to take off. Um, and I clip her myself because she is uh, small enough for me to manage. Uh, Randy used to come and do Maxie because he was much bigger. Max was like this tall. Um, so we clipped their nails and their wings and their flight feathers and that's it. Now the pooping, you know, birds are light for flight. They Definitely, they have a different bone structure. Their bones are less dense than other animals. Sorry, my book is falling and I just caught it. Uh, their bones are lighter. They're made differently. So they can be light for flight. Um, and light for flight means they eat the, a little bit all the time and they poop all the time. And their poop is... Uh, Pee and poop combined. Birds don't have um, the same digestive parts as we do. They have a vent. It's called a vent. And the poop and pee comes out the same time kind of thing. So they, they, um, yeah, and they do go a lot. Now here's the thing. Uh, yes, I've, I get poop on me from time to time. But once you have a pet, for some reason they, they kind of know not to poop on you. Like she will literally tell me when she has to go. See, she's happy. That was a tail wag. That's a posture that they do 
when they're excited. Like, she's happy to be with me right now. She's like, Mom, you're talking. That is so cool, right? Are you happy for me talking? I know you are. Um, but she'll even make little noises where I know, she'll just be like, er, 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 tell me, and I can just take her off and go. And now we have wood floors, so I can just, she'll just go potty right there, or I can hold her over the trash can. That's probably what I should do, just hold her over the trash can, and she'll go potty in the trash can. But when she, if she just goes on the floor, then I just pick up a tissue and I just wipe it right then. Um, around her cage, I have one of those, um, because I leave her cage open all the time, and some bird owners would say, don't do that. But uh, I only have Kirby, and she, Kirby's afraid of her. Kirby's afraid of her own shadow, so she doesn't um, get, uh, she doesn't never get Kiwi. And if Kiwi gets, I'm trying to find my zoomer. If Kiwi gets out of the cage, she usually climbs up onto the couch, and... Um, I'll find her there, which isn't good because she needs her water supply and all that, but um, it, it happens very, very rarely. Um, but what was I going to say? Around her cage, I have one of those like um, office mats. It's like a clear plastic mat, which her cage is small, so it you know, it covers. So that is what protects the carpet because we have carpet in that room. And then I can just take that out and hose it down or just use it. <laughs> See that tail wag? Look, she's gonna, that's all excitement. She's all happy, right? Yeah, this is all about you. This is all about you. Now, Kiwi, a green cheek conure does not, they don't talk. Not that I know of. I mean, maybe there's been one and, you know, but as a rule, uh, green cheek conures, sun conures. Um, I don't believe conures talk. Uh, Max talked very well. Max would say, Sarah, he would call me. He would say, that's good. Mm. Uh, <laughs> step up. Um, he would say, he said so many things, but it was basically what I would say to him all the time. He just started to repeat or learn, you know, what I was saying. Uh, but he could use it in context. He could use it like, you know, he knew what was going on. Um, Pepper talked some. Pepper the Eclectus definitely talked, but not in such a clear voice. Max's voice was a lot clearer. And... Um, but Conyers don't talk. She just, she's, Conyers can be very loud. They can just go papi, papi, like really loud. But for the most part, she's quiet. Like she doesn't even make noises unless she's calling me, which since I got rid of the other two birds and we sold them to a family. Um, and listen, I had guilt over it and I still miss Max a lot because he was my buddy. But they're a lot of work. I just didn't, I couldn't put in all the work anymore and just go live my life. I didn't want to leave them in the cage all the time um, because I spent a lot of time with Max in the beginning. Anyway, um, I lost my train of thought again. Uh, but she, she, w yes, she, she will call me now because she's the only one. I sit at night, I sit right next to her cage, and she, she just sits with me the whole time. <coughs> um, on my knee, usually. Right? We're buddies. So that's about it. I hope that answered your questions, Peggy. I think birds as pets are fantastic. I love birds. I think they are so intelligent. And come here, they're, 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 they're clean. She cleans herself all the time. She get, she takes baths. Oh, that was the other thing. I used to take Maxie in the shower with me. And he would, and then I, when he was done, I would just sit him on top of the shower pole. But they love to take a bath. They get all wet, soaked. And, like, she'll just shake her whole body. And, yeah, so they're very clean. And they groom, they groom themselves. I mean, yeah, there's feathers. Like, now it's probably molting season. And I said in a previous video that she is 
a little bit bossy right now because it's um, mating season and her hormones are going a little crazy um, but as a general rule they're lovely little pets and they love you um, so if you're gonna have a bird though probably one is better just just start with one you don't need to go crazy and have a bunch and I would pick a medium bird that's been hand reared that you can handle and get to know it first so see if you can go visit with it before you get it and see what it's going to be like see if it's friendly um, some birds need a lot more attention some are self-sufficient and will play with toys in their cage so it's just like anything you have to see what the best fit is for you if you have time to spend or not some birds it's just they'll be fine in their cage with toys and you know if you're not home a lot but look at her eyes closing like she's not she is enjoying it right um what else so the talkers like an African gray see I have I have allergies and I never thought I could have a dog which I have now and she bites oh that's another thing she does bite this little beak can put a real hard bite on. It's very sharp and um, she will bite if she if she doesn't like something. Um, she's not drawing blood on me probably. Hey, don't bite my fingernail. <laughs> but see, that's how sharp her beak is. Her little tongue in there, see I could show you if she'd open, but that's like a third, that's like a third hand for birds. The tip of their tongues is like a thumb, it's like a thumb uh, thumb. And so they can maneuver things like, let me see if I have a toothpick on here. Kiwi, where's a toothpick? Where's a toothpick? Ah, here it is. I'll show you how she maneuvers a toothpick. It's so cute. You want one of these? What is this? You want one? What are you doing? What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Huh? What? Show me. What are you going to do with the toothpick? Are you just going to bite it apart? Oh, boring. Usually she'll make it go back and forth like a, like a, a core on the cob. Sorry. Yeah, but they're very easily distracted because she's little so birds of prey would eat her for lunch so you know loud noises things like that they can be upsetting but in general she's very sweet and calm and look look she's doing that's like a little feeding posture when they shake their little heads back and forth like that what are you gonna do give me that I want that I want that. You give me this. What do you think you're doing? And then sometimes she'll hold stuff with her hand. She'll hold it with her hand. Maxie used to do that more. She doesn't do it as much. Give me that. Give me that. She's tough. She's a tough little bird, aren't ya? That's my shoe. Give me that. You're not doing what I thought you were going to do. <laughs> I just love them. I think they're adorable and What are you doing? What are you doing? Give me that. She's so soft. So soft. Give me that. Give me that. Give me this paw. It's not a paw. Claw. Give me. Give me. Oh. Oh. Give me. Oh, and these little holes on her beak are called her nares, and those are her nostrils. And her ears are actually 
I'll try to show you her ears. Oh, you dropped it. So right here are her ears. If I can, right under here. It's gonna be hard to show you on camera, but right under here, where is it, Kay? Yeah, that's it, right here. So she has ears that are just, they're just the flat like our ears, but there's no outside of the ear. So it's just right here and I, she likes when you rub her ears. Right here. Can you see that? Anywho, what else can I tell you? Um, they live a long time. So she could live probably like 30 years. So it's a big investment. Now, um, parakeets, parakeets, see that was all happiness. That was a happy, and she probably has to poo. So every 10 minutes or so, she probably has to poo. Just so, just FYI, you know, so if you're wearing something nice, and a lot of people will put a towel over their shoulder like this, and then she can sit there, and if she poos, it's no big deal, you know. So, you know, we do we do what we need to do for a pet. See, she's pooing. She just pooed. She went to the back of the chair and pooed, so she didn't do it on me. Come on. See? See how considerate you are? You're very considerate. Thank you, Kiwi. Thank you so much. See? She's a very good girl. So now I just have to wipe that poo that's on the floor. And hopefully I didn't run over it. And it's just a little bit, like, depending on what they've eaten, too. So sometimes if she, because that's a good point I could talk about. Food. Just like dogs, um, birds eat a pellet diet. Like, pe it's not pellets, but it's like, she eats little round, um, what do they call it when it's dogs? Um, kibble? Something like kibble, you know what I'm talking about? So that's what she has, has as her main diet. And there's she she eats Zupreme, Zupreme I think, which is recommended. And it's just got everything they need in it. It has all the nutrients and that type of um, stuff. And it keeps her poo good. Like her poo is a good consistency and all that stuff. Now my bigger birds, I used to give fruits and vegetables. So whenever I had vegetables, I gave them a little or rice, pasta. Maxie could eat pretty much anything. Max ate chicken. <laughs> so my macaw. But she doesn't eat too much other than fruit. She loves fruit like grapes especially, apples, bananas, all that stuff. She's not big on, she'll eat a little bit of pasta, but not veggies. Like she doesn't go for the greens. It's so weird. Um, Maybe she's got a sweet tooth, but when she eats those things, her poo gets more runny, like more wet. Um, so, but just for a little while until it comes out of her and, the, you know, till she digests everything and then it's fine. Um, what else? So her diet is very easy. I just keep it, her, her food bowl in her, um, uh, sorry in her cage filled, make sure they always have water, and Kiwi's got a big dish in her um, cage so that she can take a bath, and she usually, she'll take a bath like once a day, or at least three times a week she takes a bath, where she gets completely soaked, and then she'll just preen herself, like she just cleans every feather, right? All right, what else, is that it? Get over here, stop being so far back. What else, Kay? Mm, molting. So right now it's spring and she is molting. There's a lot more feathers on the bottom of her cage than normal, um, but they all grow back. She does not pluck her feathers. When birds are stressed out, they pluck their feathers. That's very sad to see. I've never had a bird that did that, but I think if you put a bird in a, a very high activity home with a lot of dogs, big dogs, a lot of people, loud noises, they're going to get stressed out. Just like a person would. I would. <clears throat> so you want to, we keep her cage up against, actually her cage is in the corner. So she has two walls that make her feel safe. <clears throat> she perches 
kind of in the back corner. <clears throat> and then when she wants to come out, she comes out and she's in the more open. But they like to feel protected and safe. So um, you definitely want to make sure if you have a bird, you put it in a safe place. Put it up against the wall. We don't cover her because she's in a room that doesn't get a lot of action after we go to bed, which is like 10 o'clock at night. We're not up very late. But birds generally go um, from dawn to dusk. So she's up at dawn, and she'll just chill and do whatever, and then she goes to sleep at dusk. Um, one, well, when if we weren't there, she would be. So when the sun goes down, she definitely goes to sleep. Um, but yes, yeah, some people cover their birds. If you have an active home, you know, you get a cover. If, you know, if you're up real late, if you're night owls, you know, cover your bird and let them be, have their peace, you know, because they have no choice in the matter. They have to, you know, do whatever the, the home is doing. <clears throat> and it's not necessarily, um, good girl, Kirby Kiwi, you are so beautiful. You are so beautiful. Look at your feathers. Look at your little feathers. So, um, yeah, she, uh, she's kind of the boss right now, and she knows it. Um, she got, she didn't get as much attention from me when I had Maxie. Maxie hogged up all my attention when I had him. Um, but my son James, she was more James's bird. James would just hold her all the time when he was on the computer, when he lived here, but he doesn't live here anymore. <laughs> um, so, what else can I tell you? See, she's just preening herself. Yeah, she's taking off little dead skin or anything, kind of like a cat would. And yeah, so th they are dusty. Oh, that's another thing. Some birds are oil-based, I guess you'd say and some are dust-based. So they, um, like ducks and things, certain birds have oil glands and some have dust glands, that's what it is. And that's what they use to um, clean their, their feathers with or something, right? They use it as um, like conditioner on their feathers, right? Yeah, yeah you do. Um, what else can I tell you? I learned all this stuff from a magazine called Bird Talk when I got my birds. Um, I subscribed to it and you get are all kinds of articles in there about birds and all the different kinds of birds. So, um, it's important, you know, it's, and smart. If you're going to have a creature that's a living thing, to get a little, you know, learn something about them so you understand them better. Um, but she's bossy. She, see, like right now, she's like, no, you don't need to touch me right now. I'm good. Do you know you're on camera? Huh? Are you, do you know you're on camera right now? Um, underneath, there's down, ow, see, she's yelling at me. There's down feathers. So all the ones that are kind of like you would stuff a pillow with, those are to keep her warm. And then she has all her pretty feathers on the outside. Right? Um, what else, Kay? What else? I do take her outside from time to time. Um, but she's nervous out there. If I just, when I go get the mail or whatever, I used to take Max out all the time. Maxie would just come with me wherever I went. But he was much bigger and so he wasn't afraid or as nervous. She's very nervous because it's a big world. Most things out there are bigger than her. So, you know, you can imagine she would be um, a little more guarded. But in general, um, she likes it. She, she likes the wind. She likes to feel, you know, all that stuff. The sun. You know, so I mean, I wouldn't put her in the hot baking sun, but you know, in spring, it's nice for her to just be in the sun for a little while. Uh, but she's she's an inside bird. She's domestic. She's not. She was never wild. She'll never be living in her. Let's see where she's from. I know it. Um, 
my pepper, my eclectus, was from the Solomon Islands. That's where they they live in in the wild. And Max, you know, would have been from the rainforests. Anywhere there's rainforests, that's where um, blue and gold macaws are from. So obviously, you know. But my birds are air conditioned birds and heat birds. Like that, they live in the air conditioning in the heat. So they they're not used to tropical temperatures they're used to the temperatures that we have you know so um but man max loved the shower i would just take him in the shower and he would you have to if there's a video on youtube of a bird in the shower or taking a shower it's so cute oh man they just love it like they open their wings and they're just like oh yeah so anyway all right i think that just about does it did that do it did I tell them everything about you? Huh? All right. I think that does it, guys. So, Kiwi, say bye-bye. Go, go say bye-bye to the camera. No, I don't like the camera. <laughs> She's nervous of it. All right, you guys. That's it. Thanks for watching.